Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's good to see you. Sorry about missing last week and a couple other weeks as well. My schedule has become extremely busy and I am just being a slacker. I just haven't found the time to create videos. So I do apologize that about that and I'm going to try and be better because I greatly enjoy doing this. Um, so I'm sorry. But today we are going to go over some Lightroom mobile tricks and these are pretty cool especially with the new update Lightroom mobile updated for generative fill which is amazing we're going to go over a couple of other ones that are fantastic so let's get right into the video Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel always good to see you if you're not subscribed make sure you hit the subscribe button and go ahead and hit the bell that way you don't miss videos I know I'm saying that early but you're probably returning and if you're not hi I'm Will, <laughs> nice to see you. Um, I'm actually gonna slide over because I'm gonna pop up the Lightroom Mobile thing right here. So swoop, slide over and let's get into Lightroom Mobile. Hopefully the recording doesn't end. It's done that before and it drives me nuts. Okay, here we are, good. Okay, Lightroom Mobile, when you open it up. Okay, so here's a bunch of photos, right? We're gonna open up this photo here. Now, just as a note, all of these features, 95% of these features are the premium version. Now, if you don't know what the premium version is, it is the $4.99 a month version. Now, if you have Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, Photoshop, any of those on your computer, if you pay for an Adobe subscription, you have it for free. You just have to log in to your Adobe account in Lightroom Mobile and you get the, premier, the pr uh, premium version. If you are just using Lightroom Mobile, the free version, unfortunately, none of these will work for you. They are good and Lightroom Mobile is great for an editor, but these will make a huge difference in the editor. So we are gonna go over a cool feature here. The first feature we're gonna go over is the generative remove. Now let's open this photo here and we wanna remove this person here. So we're gonna go into our removal tools and a couple of things that I don't like about this is there's no way to select different remove tools and delete them. For example, if I select here, and I remove her, and then let's say I go up here and I remove that, and I go here and I remove that, there is no way for me to then go back and remove a specific one. What I have to do is I have to go up here to the arrow, select the arrow and click back, that removes the last one, click back, that removes the last one, and click back and that removes the last one. I don't like this because in other Lightroom versions, you can click the different removes and you can just delete those specific ones or update them. That needs to be fixed. I think it probably will. So let's try this. Let's close this. Let's go ahead and remove her, okay? Now this is just using the remove tool, but there are three, uh, there are three total tools, four total tools actually. There's the remove, if you click the little blue square, there's the heal, the clone, and then generative AI. So this is the remove tool. If we switch to the heal, Let's do this, let's do that. That's the heel, no, that's good. Let's go back here, reset, remove, and then we're gonna try the clone, and that's the clone. Now, that little shadow you're seeing, that we're gonna, I'm gonna explain what that is in a second and what's happening with that. So let's undo this. We're going to go back to remove, which is where the generative AI is, and we're gonna try the generative AI. So select, toggle that on, agree. Now really quick, before we keep going on the video, don't forget to hit this like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're looking for a really, really amazing Lightroom Master of Editing course, I just completed an very extensive Lightroom editing course on Lightroom Classic, but it does work with the other ones because all the tools are basically the same. But I'll link that in the description. But for now, let's get back into the video. Select, toggle that on, agree, perfect, and we're gonna select her. This is gonna take as long as it takes, depending on how good your Wi-Fi is. You have to have Wi-Fi or an internet connection in order for generative AI to work. You don't necessarily have it for the other ones, the heal tool or anything like that. But I've been really impressed with generative AI. So again, that actually looks amazing. But again, what is that halo, that light spot? Well, that, is our mask. Now this leads us into another thing. If you go into your masks, which is this one here, you notice that we have a select subject AI mask. In Lightroom Classic, this updates by using command, option, and U. 
But after talking to Adobe, they said that this should update automatically. It has not for me. I don't know what the issue is, but it has not. Technically, if you go up here to, let's select that, up here to the cloud, you see it syncing here. This being on is synced. Now it says adjustment changes pending to be synced. I think that's what this means. So I'm gonna force sync it and see if that works. So I think because this is still syncing that it's not actually doing the image. So fine, so how do we fix this? We go in here, we go to the, the mask and we delete it. See, now it's gone. So that looks fantastic, but now we have removed that mask. But if you do do an AI mask and then you do an adjustment brush, like a healing brush, you're gonna get those things and that should um, automatically update. So that's one thing to think. The next thing we're gonna go over is something someone asked me in a prior video, which is batch edits. Now this is really cool. So when you're in a photo, click the three dots up here, click copy settings. You're gonna select every adjustment that you wanna make. So let's just say we have them all here and press check mark. Now we've saved them. Then we're gonna go back to our images. We're going to then select the ones that we want. So push and hold on one, good. And then just select whatever photos that you want to add those adjustments. Once those are selected, you're gonna press paste here at the bottom. Now I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna paste it all, but that is how you mass adjust or mass edit photos. Now, the next step, batching edit, which wasn't available before. Once you've done all your settings, once you've uh, um, edited all your photos, you can then batch export. So selecting all the photos that you just had, you're gonna click share, you're gonna go export as, you're gonna select all of your options. So JPEG, largest dimensions, 90% quality, whatever you want. If you wanna include the watermark, you can do that. More options, fine, 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 doesn't matter. Then you press check mark. All of these images will then export to your camera roll on your camera. And that is simply how you batch edit and batch export your images, which makes it so much faster. Let me tell you, it is awesome. And the final cool thing, which I found out on accident was the ability to see the before and afters of adjustments. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. Let's just, we're just gonna make this look really bad. No big deal. I mean, just add some, I don't know, have to add some grain, vignette, add a vignette. I'm not really gonna keep these settings. I just wanna show you some cool stuff. Uh, we're gonna crop it. Yeah, I'm just gonna crop it. Good, perfect. Okay, so now we've made these adjustments, right? So if you push and hold on the screen, just with your finger, you're gonna get a before and after of the image, of the entire image. So if you look here, here is, I don't know if you can see this, before, after, before, after. But if you push and hold on your edit at the bottom, so if I push and hold on masking, shows me the before and after the masking. If I push and hold on the edits, well, that is not as exciting as I thought it was. So basically, that only shows the before and after of the masking. So if you push and hold on the masking, it's gonna show the before and after of the masking. And apparently, that is all it does. It doesn't show the before and after of the edits. So that's not as cool as I thought it was. Anyways, <laughs> and that pretty much wraps up the basic overview of the cool new features of Lightroom Mobile. So if you have any questions, hit the comment section. Go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me end this really quick. Perfect. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in learning how to edit in Lightroom, I have an entire Lightroom Master of Editing course, which I will link in the description. Otherwise, if you wanna check out some tips and tricks for Lightroom Mobile, check out that video. YouTube recommends that video. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Have a good one.